Have you ever heard Muhammad's real name? Is Muhammad a name? Not at all. It's actually a title. We'll tell you his real name and why it's more damaging than you think. If you have been watching these video series, short video series, hopefully you've been blessed by them. And if you're a Muslim watching them, welcome. And hopefully it's been challenging enough for you to rethink your allegiance to Muhammad or to Islam, because at the end of the day, hopefully you've discovered so quickly that the Allah uh, that you worship actually uh, brags about himself uh, by giving himself characteristics that ascribe to Satan, or the prophet that you're following doesn't know what's going to happen to him and he's leading you like a blind leading a blind. Or uh, as you will see also, we're going to talk about the book that you believe in. Is it really a uh, purely perfected or preserved book and so on and so forth, uh, among many other topics, of course, that we have covered. Today, we're going to talk about the real Muhammad and his name, actually, in this case. What is the real name of Muhammad? We're going to talk about that uh, in this part. And then in another part, we're going to talk about his lineage, his lineage. So what is the real name of Muhammad? As always with us here, virtually our dear brother rob christian rob welcome back brother thank you again for inviting me to do another video a short video uh, and the topic as our brother already said the real name of muhammad uh, brother uh, god bless you god bless your ministry god bless your wonderful team who are helping us out to regard this amazing uh, short videos this series uh, about islam so let us see what the real name of muhammad is and uh, what the Islamic books are telling us. As you know, dear brother, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad is not a name, it's a title. That's right. Can you please enlighten us? Because you're an Arabic speaker, you know, uh, you used to be a Muslim. What does the name Muhammad, what, uh, it's actually, as, as I said, it's not a name, it's a title. What does Muhammad mean? Muhammad is, is the one who's been, who's praised, you know, the praised one or the one the who is one. being praised. Yeah. The praised one, exactly. So it's the praised one. So it's a divine title because if we go to chapter one of the Quran, ayah two, it says, Alhamdulillah. So it should be attributed to Allah alone. How can a human being, <clears throat> if he's not God, how can he have the divine title Muhammad, meaning the praised one? Alhamd. Brother, Hamd, Alhamdulillah. Can we say Alhamdulillah, Muhammad? Well, you know, it sounds like his name said it all, actually, without having to say it this way. So that means when you call yourself Muhammad, that means you are calling basically yourself Allah. Isn't that shirk, ya Muslimin? Isn't that shirk to call yeah. yourself Muhammad then? I well, you know, it sounds like his name said it all, actually, without having to say it this way. So that means when you call yourself Muhammad, that means you are calling basically yourself Allah, isn't that shirk, ya Muslimin? Isn't that shirk to call yeah. yourself Muhammad then? And, and brother, I mean, if if the claim that he came to uh, glorify Allah, then his name should have been Muhammad, not Muhammad, Muhammad, the one who is glorifying or praising Allah. I would accept it that way. I mean, the one who kept praising Allah all the time. But his name is Muhammad. He is the one who receives uh, the praise. Exactly. So, meaning Muhammad is a divine title that we can attribute to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He is the praised one. So here, when Muhammad took this divine title, he tried to make himself equal to our Lord, for example, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, glory to his name. So here, Muhammad tried to act like a, a real cult leader. In the end, you buy their fruits, you will know them. Uh, a true cult leader who created Islam, the cult, the man-made cult. And we are going to show you that it certainly wasn't his real name because the, we know the real name of Muhammad after doing some investigation again from the Islamic books. And here is from now on the proof. If we, let's see, if we can switch screens, here is uh, some information. There is a, uh, a, uh, a very famous doctor in the Arabic world, especially from Egypt in this case. He is uh, the director 
of the manuscripts in Alexandria. And he has actually an office. He is a director. He is a doctor. And his name is uh, Yusuf Zaydan. Maybe you've heard of him, brother. He is a famous figure in the Islamic world. And he said that Muhammad, his name was Qutham, right? And maybe you want to read the Arabic, brother, for us, for everybody. Yeah, it says, أنه حمل هذا الاسم, meaning he had this name, Qutham, speaking of Muhammad here. What's the name, brother? Qutham. Qutham. Yeah, and it says, إلى أن بلغ من عمره ما يزيد على الأربعين عاما until he reached the age a little over 40 years of age. Wow, so Muhammad's name was not Muhammad, but actually Qutham. And this is an Islamic doctor who happens to be a doctor by the name of Yusuf Zaydan. And at the same time, he's the director of the Islamic manuscripts. And on top of that, he is the manager. He is the, the manager of uh, the Islamic Museum or the Museum in Alexandria. He's the one saying it. A doctor, an Islamic doctor is saying that. Wow. So Muhammad's name was not Muhammad, but actually Qutham. And this is an Islamic doctor who happens to be a doctor by the name of Yusuf Zaydan. And at the same time, he's the director of the Islamic manuscripts. And on top of that, he is the manager. He is the, the manager of uh, the Islamic Museum or the uh, museum in Alexandria. He's the one saying it. A doctor, an Islamic doctor is saying that. Yes. That's the one. Yeah, That's he's the one saying that. Here. And he got uh, basically the information from this book. Book Hayat Muhammad, meaning the life of Muhammad, page 39. And the writer of this book is the, the doctor Muhammad Hussein Haikal, very famous Islamic doctor, Muhammad exactly. Hussein Haikal in his book. Yes, brother, you want to add something? No, no, I was going to say he is a famous writer. Famous writer. So he, uh, this this other doctor that I mentioned, Yusuf Zaydan, is got, getting it from, the, his, from this book and he's going to quote it from this book. Watch. So if we go uh, continue, look what it says. Brother, can you uh, read and translate? Qal al Dr. Zaydan, Dr. Zaydan said... إن اسم محمد الذي أطلق عليه the name Muhammad that was ascribed to him عند ولادته when he was born was كان قثم ابن عبد الله قثم the son of the servant of Allah wait a second Muslims always told us that Muhammad's name is Muhammad and he is the son of Abdullah but here a doctor, a famous doctor, and the director of the manuscripts in Alexandria, right? He is saying, and he's reading from the book that we just mentioned, Hayat Muhammad, the life of Muhammad, from page 39. He is saying that that book is saying that Muhammad's real name is Qutham, and he's the son of the slave of who? Of Alat, one of the daughters of Allah, one of the pagan idols of the Quran. And the subject, one of the subjects of the satanic verses. He is saying that that book is saying that Muhammad's real name is Qutham and he's the son of the slave of who? Of Alat, one of the daughters of Allah, one of the pagan idols of the Quran. And the subject, one of the subjects of the satanic verses. Exactly. Again, the translation for everybody. Muhammad's real name for the first 40 years of his life, his birth name that was given maybe by his mother, maybe by his father, Ibn Abdullah, right? He's the original name of the father of Muhammad, not Abdullah. Qutham Ibn Abdullah, meaning Qutham, that's his real name, the son of the slave of Allah. What happens, brother? What happened basically? Much later, Muslims try to fix duct tape because they are too embarrassed. How can our prophet be called the son of the slave of Allah, one of yeah. the three daughters of Allah, the moon idol Allah, the stone idol, the moon idol Allah, and one of his three daughters, Allah, right? Allah. So that was the real name of Muhammad, brother? That's what That's it right. says. I mean, I, I don't understand uh, why our Muslim friends are so um, uh, secretive about this. What, what if they came down to say, you know what? Uh, when he was called to be a prophet, his name changed. Okay, great. I, I'll accept that. No big deal, you know? 
But no, no, no. We want to uh, polish this guy and his characteristics and his uh, uh, personality. I want to make him perfect from even before his birth. Exactly. So you see, Muslims always need to do tarqiyah. We call that exactly. uh, fixing, duct taping, There's the disasters. They need to hide and come up with new stuff to hide the embarrassing real historical facts. Exactly. So you see, Muslims always need to do tarqiyah. We call that exactly. uh, fixing, duct taping, There's the disasters. They need to hide and come up with new stuff to hide the embarrassing real historical facts. Exactly. So you see, Muslims always need to do tarqiyah. We call that exactly. uh, fixing, duct taping, There's the disasters. They need to hide and come up with new stuff to hide the embarrassing real historical facts about the name, even about the name of their prophet, right? And even the family name, the name of his father, uh, because the, these are all pagans, sons of pagan. Muhammad was a son of a pagan, and we know from other Islamic sources that the father of Muhammad was Najis, right? He was a mushrik, and even Amina, the mother of Muhammad, died as a mushrika. And these are very famous topics and facts in the Islamic books and in Islamic world. His parents died as mushrikeen. Muhammad's real name is Qutham, and he is the son of Abdallah, the son of the slave of Allah, one of the three daughters of Allah, the supreme moon idol. Yeah, and, and if we that, continue, dear brother, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, and that explains why when uh, the Satanic Verses uh, incident took place, which you and I, by the way, did at least one uh, live stream on that, why the Quraysh basically tribe uh, was praising the fact that finally the God of Muhammad accepted these goddesses as intercessors uh, because Muhammad was appealing to those that are familiar, not only to them, but to him himself, to his own family. And we showed earlier in one of these short videos that Muhammad was asked by Allah more than once, actually, and Gabriel, uh, Jibril, to abandon, you know, basically displaying idols or the worship and the service of idols. So I'm not really so sure why our Muslim friends don't want to face reality, basically. Exactly. And dear brother, uh, you noticed uh, the, the audience are noticing that we are not inventing anything. We are not fabricating anything. We are only reading what the Islamic books are saying and what scholars and doctors, Muslim scholars and doctors say about Muhammad. Exactly. And dear brother, uh, you noticed uh, the, the audience are noticing that we are not inventing anything we are not fabricating anything we are only reading what the islamic books are saying and what scholars and doctors muslim scholars and doctors say about muhammad exactly and dear brother uh, you noticed uh, the the audience are noticing that we are not inventing anything we are not fabricating anything we are only reading what the islamic books are saying and what scholars and doctors Muslim scholars and doctors say about Muhammad, his real name, who his family are, that they are nothing but pagans. He is a son of pagan and Muslims. And Muhammad even himself had to fix all kinds of things to look like a prophet of God. Here is another book. And you see, we don't fabricate. We only read and we ask questions. Here is a famous book. And you know this book, brother, as an ex-Muslim. It's called Taj al-Arus, meaning the yeah. crown of the bride, Taj al-Arus, volume 33. As you see, a huge uh, book with multiple volumes, in this case, volume 33, by Murtadi al-Zubayri. What do you want to say about this book, brother? Do you, do you want to well, add Well, I mean, it's a very known book. I mean, you hear about it all the time. Taj al-Arus this, Taj al-Arus that, because it's basically a kind of like a dictionary, if you wish, or a concordance. It's basically a kind of like a dictionary, if you wish, or a concordance. It's basically a kind of like a dictionary, if you wish, or a concordance that, that you go to. Exactly. So what does this book say to make things more clear? If we go to this book and we open volume 13 of this book, Taj al-Arus, we find in volume 33 on page 228, the following statement. Please read it, brother, and read the translation. Yeah, so, Anta Qothamu wa khalquka Qothamu. You are Qotham and you're, you are created from Qotham, basically. 
All right. So here again, Muhammad, his name is Qutham, not Muhammad. His original name is Qutham from a second source, from a second book, as we're showing you. And he's even created from Qutham. That's the statement about Muhammad. And this is what the Quraysh used to say to Muhammad. So let's see, brother, what the meaning of Qutham is, shall we? Absolutely. And maybe we can wrap up this part after that. All right. Here is the meaning of Qutham. Let's see if we can show you. Here is another book to explain to us. I'm not fabricating. I'm not inventing meanings. I'm only seeing. I'm doing the homework that Muslims don't do themselves. All right. Here is the meaning of Qutham. Let's see if we can show you. Here is another book to explain to us. I'm not fabricating. I'm not inventing meanings. I'm only seeing, I'm doing the homework that Muslims don't do themselves. We have to do their homework for them. Here's another book to make things clear and to explain to us the meaning behind Qutham. What is Qutham? Al-Mujma' al-Saghir. Al-Mujma' al-Saghir, as you see, that's the title of this book. And you see the cover of the book on the screen. If we go to the next page, we see the meaning of this name. What is Qutham? Qutham, brother, please read. And sorry, but we have to say things as they are. What is the meaning of Qutham? Go ahead, brother. Well, the first one says, Al-Qutham huwa al-latkh bil-adirah. Wal-adirah hiya ghaet al-insan, ay buraz al-insan. So I'll, I'll summarize it. Basically, Al-Qutham, basically, it's the, um, uh, what, you know, the, the def what defecates out of a human being, basically. Uh, the, the filth right. that comes out of a human being. So, brother. So that's why the Quraysh the were making fun of, of him, by the way. Yeah, and, and not only fun. His family gave him the name Qutham. And imagine being called Qutham for 40 years of your life. Would that drive you crazy? Did, of course. Could that be the reason why Muslim, uh, why, why, sorry, why the Quraysh the pagans of Mecca used to call Muhammad Majnoon, a man, a demon-possessed man. I mean, if for 40 years, if you have been called the filth of, 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 of men, right? The crap of men. I mean, that would have uh, drived you crazy. So the, the meaning of Qutham is the filth of, you know, we are trying to be political correct. Yeah, and but I you get the careful. idea what it means. Yeah, we want to yeah. be careful, folks. This is what the Islamic source is saying. This is not my opinion. This isn't Rob's opinion. We you get the careful. idea what it means. Yeah, we want to yeah. be careful, folks. This is what the Islamic source is saying. This is not my opinion. This isn't Rob's opinion. We you get the careful. idea what it means. Yeah, we want to yeah. be careful, folks. This is what the Islamic source is saying. This is not my opinion. This isn't Rob's opinion. We're quoting to you Islamic sources here. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, and this information, we can find it in another book called Al-Mudhish by Al-Jalal ibn al Jawzi. So I gave you not one, but two books that explain the meaning of Qutham, which means the defecation. Sorry, sorry, guys. That's what it means. We are, we, we are trying to be politically correct, to, you know, to use, don't use bad language. But that's the real meaning behind the real name of Muhammad that he carried, that he that he had for 40 years. So he had to change his name and take a divine title, meaning Muhammad, the praised one, because his name was really filthy. But it is what it is. That's the true name of Muhammad.